Let's pretend you get on a bus and it's super crowded. The only spot that's open is between two strangers. So you sit down between two people you never met and everyone is fine. Everyone's keeping to themselves, no one's making eye contact, it's perfect. Sure your shoulders are touching, but that's just what happens. That's part of the bus going experience, you poor person. But then at the very next stop, aisle seat guy gets off. So now you and window seat guy are sitting right next to each other. But since you're in the middle, you have to be the one to decide do you move or not? I honestly don't know what the right thing to do in that situation is. I'm conflicted. Because if you move, it would be silently telling the other person, Hey, you're disgusting. I can't stand having our shoulders touch any longer and I'm glad to finally get away from you. Ugh. But on the other hand, if I was the window seat guy, I would want the middle seat guy to become the new aisle seat guy. I wouldn't see moving as rude. I would just want his gross, disgusting body as far away from me as possible. That's not rude. But on the other, other hand, maybe I'm overthinking everything and most people don't even mind being this close to another human and they aren't struggling socially, I don't know. Now imagine that same situation, but with urinals. If you're in the middle urinal, do you move halfway through to the other urinal? Because I would. Are you supposed to talk to people when you're sitting two inches away from them? I always felt like I should say something, like, hey, did you see the game last night? I didn't, I was too busy drawing cartoons. But I realized that this is a two-way street. I'm worried about not talking to someone, but they're not talking to me either. We both agreed that there's this unwritten contract between us that we're not even going to look at each other. It got me thinking about strangers and specifically how I treat them. And how I can make money off of them, hey -o! I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, that was a joke. For most of my life, I would go out of my way to avoid talking to people. I would stay in my lane, mind my own business, no eye contact, if everyone's using a urinal I'd have to pee tomorrow, yes I'm lonely. But now that YouTube's the thing, I'm interacting with strangers more often than I've had to in my entire life. So I've been thinking a lot about strangers, and first of all, I think the word stranger is already an insulting label for someone just because you don't know their name. Oh, I don't know this person? They're a stranger. They're strange. I'm the normal one. They're the freaks. They probably murder people with an axe. That's always the go-to profession of a stranger, an axe murderer. But the people you see throughout your day are all humans with their own hopes and dreams, and some of them may hope to kill you, but you'll never know because you didn't ever take the time to get to know them. So I think that the people you see throughout your daily life aren't strangers. They're potential friends. Except for the weird ones, obviously. Stay away from them. And yes, I'm telling you to judge people based on their appearance. They're the ones that chose to wear anime shirts in public, okay? So back to the bus scenario. I'm sitting right next to this fellow human being. So far, there's not a single reason why I should dislike this person. But I don't know why, if you put him and me on a bus next to each other, I want him as far away from me as possible. Just stop touching my shoulder! So that was the last time I took the bus. Unfortunately, that's not the only place you meet strangers. One time I was at Home Depot and I was looking for jumper cables and I couldn't find them anywhere. And I don't know if I'm the only human that's like this, but I will try everything in my power to not talk to a sales associate. I guess it's because I know they get paid minimum wage and their life sucks and I just want to leave them alone and not make their job any harder than it has to be. But asking employees for help isn't even bothering them that much. In fact, I think it's part of their job? Like, what's the worst thing they're going to say? Ugh. You don't know where one specific item is? Everyone else knows. Did you even look? They're in the jumper cable aisle, idiot. No one's gonna think that. So feeling desperate, I mustered up what little courage I had and swaggered up to someone wearing an orange vest and said, uh, excuse me, do you know where the jumper cables are? I don't work here. Oh, you don't work here? And then he walked away. And then he waddled away, waddle waddle. And then the very next day, bam, bam, bam. So I think the logical thing to do in that situation would have been to find someone who does work there. But I left the store because I didn't want to run into that same guy again. But I also bought a hammer because I didn't want people to think that I stole something. So... Oh yeah. And by the way, if you wear an orange vest to Home Depot, just expect people to ask you for help. Same goes for people who wear red shirts at Target. You'd think I'd learn from my mistakes, but no, I have a bunch more examples. When my book came out, my publisher said that it was going to be carried at Barnes & Noble, and I thought that was super duper cool and wanted to see my book in the wild. Not to buy or anything, just to have a look at. So I took my friend Adam from Something Else YT, and we went to the local Barnes & Noble and started our search. We looked in the humor section, didn't find it. Then we checked the new release section, it wasn't there either. Then we looked at the best-selling section, then the religious section, but we couldn't find the book anywhere. So 
either the publisher lied or they had already sold out. But just to be sure, I asked one of the workers, hey, do you guys have a book by The Odd Ones Out? He kind of looks like this. And the worker typed something out on his computer and said, oh yeah, we got those in the back. We just haven't put them out yet. So then he went to the back room, brought out a copy and handed it to me saying, here you go, kid. And I thought, well, frick. I can't just hand it back to the guy and say, oh no, that's okay. I didn't want to buy it. I just wanted to have a look at it. Do you know how inconvenient that would be? So the only less awkward option I could think of was to buy my own book. And you know what? I'd get a couple cents back from this purchase, so it wouldn't have been a total loss. But Adam, being the more sensible one, said, Dude, this is ridiculous. You, you have to come clean. So then he went to the worker and said, So he actually uh, wrote this book. He just wanted to get a look at it, like, in the wild. And the worker said, Oh, that's so cool. Do you want to sign our copies? And then I thought, Well, hold on. You're not even going to ask me for my ID? How do you know I actually wrote this book and I'm not some guy trying to deface someone else's? And then the guy gave me a whole stack of my books and I signed them all. Last story before I go, I was in the hallway of a building and me and this potential friend crossed paths. He said, hello, and I was going to respond with hello and how's it going? But I combined the two and ended up saying, how? And then I jumped out a window and fell to my death. I can't rationalize that behavior. Maybe I spend too much time on the computer and I'm not used to looking at real people's faces, but I'm trying to change. Don't get me wrong, going to conventions and meeting fans has helped me a lot with talking to people. Granted, those conversations are usually one-sided and a real stranger won't already know who I am, but they've still helped me. Now, you might be expecting me to give you advice on overcoming social anxiety, but if you watch this video, you know I'm not the most qualified to give that advice, but I'll try my best. I know it's hard to feel confident and I'm still working on it, but you have to understand that we're all people and we all have things that we're struggling with. And in reality, we're not all watching or caring about every little thing that other people do. We're all too busy worrying about what other people think of us. So with enough practice and believing in yourself, you can show the world your true colors and I think you'll find that people are a lot nicer than you think. So if you're the middle seat guy on the bus and you have to decide whether or not to move, do whatever you want, no one cares. Just stop touching my shoulders!